So this is how my day started. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> and it, I think it starts this way every day. I wake up, right? Like whatever, alarm, before my alarm, whatever. I get up, I go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I see myself in the mirror and I go, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> then I have to walk in and weigh in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And then I have another kind of negative reaction. And then I go out on my day, I got my coffee, I whatever, wrestle the kid to school, whatever I have to do. But at some point I have to put my makeup on. And I noticed today because I was coming here and I knew I was going to be on video, I was extra critical because I looked at myself in the mirror and I saw my red nose from yesterday because I'd had that horrible allergic yeah. reaction with the runny nose. And I saw my red nose and I looked at myself and I was like, oh, you know, today I'm going to need foundation, concealer. <laughs> like I need the power everything. tools today. I need the everything. And it was, it was something that then as I was getting ready, I thought, you know, that's the thing of it, isn't it? We start our day as women and in beauty. And as a beauty professional, um, I look at other women and I think, what do I want to emphasize? What's beautiful about them? But when I look at myself, the first thing I do is criticize mm -hmm. my red nose, my crinkly face, the sheet crinkle on yeah. my cheek, <laughs> whatever, if my hair's grown out wrong or I don't like my hair or whatever it is. And so I was thinking about that today and I thought, you know, that's the whole point, isn't it? Like we need to stop being judgy. So I was thinking about some quotes that I had dug out and one of them is from the stunning Audrey Hepburn and it says, true beauty in an individual is reflected in their soul. And it's not reflected in the mirror. It's reflected mm -hmm. in your soul. Mm -hmm. So how do we get there? How as women and as beauty professionals do we get there? Because I think you, uh, the same, when you're mm -hmm. doing your artistry and you're mm -hmm. doing your, your women and their makeup, I mean, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you look at what you want to emphasize first, right? Yeah. Not what you want to cover up. Correct. And I always ask like clients too, what are you comfortable with? Mm. What do you mm -hmm. love about yourself? Because I'm going to like highlight those areas. And even on myself, there's obviously parts of my face. And I, I mean, obviously as women, our entire bodies that we prefer um, over others. So I always try to highlight those areas because... I mean, you know me, I hate smoky eyes and you always try to put me in a smoky eye. <laughs> so, and a lot of women, when they get their makeup done, they're not the person to do like a full face of makeup every day. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to put them in a crazy amount of makeup and they feel like it's a mask on themselves. So by just asking what a person's actually comfortable with, you can kind of like, I don't know, pick and choose what parts of themselves they like so they don't feel overwhelmed by the experience. Or like I do that day to day so I don't have to put on a full face of makeup. Like today I kept a really simple eye and I just did my base makeup because honestly when I wake up in the morning I don't want to have to deal with myself. I know, right? Well, it's that looking in the mirror, yeah. right? Like yeah. I think our first, our first moment tends to be critical. Mm-hmm. And I hear that so many times when women sit down in the chair, they immediately point out what they don't like. Right. Well, I got really dark circles today, or can you make me look 10 years younger? Or Oh, I hear that. I <laughs> hear that one a lot, yeah. Right. And so, I, you know, if you think about this idea of true beauty, mm -hmm. I know we've talked about that a lot, you and I, because obviously we're different ages. Mm hmm we are not mother daughter, just to <laughs> clarify for yeah, everybody. Everybody thinks, um, yeah, that we are, but we could be. I mean, we are that age um, apart. But um, I think we come together in that place of like, as women, mm -hmm. we are critical. And so when we talk about true beauty, um, that's one of the things we've been parsing lately, right? Like, what is true beauty versus real beauty? So, I don't know. What do you think of when you hear real beauty versus true beauty? Well, I guess when I think true beauty, I think more of comfort. So hmm. I always think of like, because I think right now, especially like in social media, everyone is all about like being like so, I don't know, just like having so much confidence in your body or in your looks. Mm -hmm. And you can't just like overnight get to a point where you're confident. You first have to just take like little tiny steps where you like, oh, now I feel more comfortable with my big nose. Now I feel more comfortable with, 
you know, having smaller lips or with having acne marks or scars on your face. So I don't think when I think true beauty, I think of just like comfort, like I'm comfortable in the home that I have because you can't just instantly go from like, I don't know, having like bad self-esteem to going to like, oh, I'm the cutest thing in the whole world. Like it doesn't work like that. And you can fake it. You can. But you won't feel good about yourself truly I don't think and you won't you won't feel beautiful well and actually that you said that it's interesting because real beauty implies fake beauty Mm -hmm. and I think it's that fake in it till you make it Mm -hmm. kind of thing so conversely today because I was so super judgy and you won't be able to see on camera we are doing this Instagram (laughs) live um well or live after the fact I don't know um I put on my traditional armor and I used to do this in my corporate Mm -hmm. job when I was feeling like, oh, I got to go into a meeting or whatever. I never wanted to be overly made up, right? Because that implied something because I was in male dominated fields. Um, I wouldn't want to be overly made up because I felt like that would be too sexualized. And I didn't want to be no makeup because I felt like I wouldn't be heard. Right. So my armor was always a solid lipstick generally red if I was really feeling like I was going to war. <laughs> of course. And then, oh, like winged dark eyeliner and nothing else. I'd, mm-hmm. you know, do my eyebrows and mascara and stuff. I mean, my ride or die is clearly concealer and mascara. But um, but yeah, it's funny we put that armor on. So that is always my armor. But it's not like, I mean, we're going to we're gonna put our um, technician on the, on the spot here. So I think personally, when your significant other, your lover, your person looks at you, I don't think they see you as most beautiful when you've got your armor on, I'm guessing. Am I right, Rob? So when you see he's nodding, just in case for those of you out there, <laughs> you can't see his nod. Um, I think the the fun thing with a significant other or your lover is they see you after pardon my French, a great night of sex, um, a great meal, a wonderful bottle of wine. When you're like your ugliest. Almost. Yeah, or what we think of as <laughs> yeah. our ugliest, right? Yeah. Like when you're like, Ugh, or right when you wake up in the morning mm-hmm. and that's that judgment when you wake up in the morning, right? Like I guarantee you your lover rolls over in bed and sees you in the morning. He doesn't see your messy hair. He doesn't see your like crinkle on your mm-hmm. face. Or if he does, he thinks it's cute, Right. And I, I, I think my biggest desire in the world, and as we get deeper into our little beauty underground podcast, I want to unfurl that more and more and more. Yeah. I want to be that mirror for people. And I know you do too. Mm-hmm. We want to bring that mirror to people to say like, see yourself through right. your lover's eyes. You know, they're not seeing those things. Um, so by pushing boundaries, by challenging, right, mm-hmm. we see those those different elements in ourself. Because back to Audrey Hepburn, you were saying something about her the other day, right? Yeah. What were you saying? Um, oh, we were talking literally yesterday. Okay. So it was we were talking about how gorgeous she was. Mm-hmm. And even as she like ages, and I brought up the fact that no one – ever when she, when she is older no one's ever like oh she's beautiful for her age it's right. just she's beautiful she's timeless she's elegant she's charming no one ever brings up the fact that like oh she's she's pretty for her age Mm-mm. nobody because ever she's says so that stunning yeah. and she didn't have botox Mm-mm. like she didn't have <laughs> no and we're all running around like busy trying to <laughs> highlight crease erase crinkle release yeah. and then you see her face and you think Damn, mm-hmm. she's beautiful. She has lines and pores. There's a, yeah, there's yeah. an authenticity there that I think, again, it gets into looking at your person mm-hmm. through, looking at yourself through your lover's eyes, um, that you look, you see yourself that way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so incredibly important. So I guess we should probably um, mention the fact that we are the beauty underground. <laughs> I am Kathleen. I'm Amelia. And uh, we are here to blow open the whole idea of beauty, have honest and real feminine conversations. Um, if you identify as a woman, we welcome you. If you identify as a man, come to our campfire, um, sit at the fire and um, hear what we have to say. Mm-hmm. It can only um, encourage all of us to to see ourselves in a more graceful light. Yeah. So we are the Beauty Underground. We will also have um, tips, tricks, products we're um, obsessing on, things we love yes. and, uh, and get into that kind of stuff. So I think we should um, 
talk a little bit more about this idea of um, how we feel in the morning and what that does with our makeup. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think today's a great day to talk about makeup um, yeah. because of true beauty versus real, real beauty, beauty versus fake beauty. So <laughs> I think I already admitted um, today is my armor day just because I was like, I don't know, like, what do I do? Um, so what are your ride and dies and what do you do like in your varying Yeah. So I feelings? think my armor is a little bit different than yours just because like I'm an esthetician. So my armor is very like skincare based. <laughs> and I know that like if my skin feels good throughout the day, I feel good. And if I can look in the mirror in a few hours and like my foundation doesn't have that like weird patchiness on mm, my forehead yeah. or like that crinkle under my nose, I'm going to feel better about myself. Um, so I guess usually I just start with like a good, I love to wash my face in the morning. <laughs> That's like my biggest thing, which I feel like sounds silly, but it makes, it makes a difference in my day. Um, and especially it's like brushing your teeth. You know, you always feel weird if you don't. Mm, true. Like that's what it is for me. It's like I don't brush my, my face teeth in the morning. You don't? I don't wash my face. You just in the go morning. in, but like you use a heavy like night cream. Not that you need to like wash your face, but do you use like a warm towel or anything? Nothing. You- <laughs> okay. <laughs> no mas. No bueno. I do not wash my face unless I take a shower in the morning. Like okay. clearly, obviously. Yeah. Because sometimes I take a shower at night, moisturize, mm-hmm. and go to bed. So I should clarify that. It's not like I stand in the shower and not. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no. You know. Okay. I Like, I wash my I wash my entire body. That includes my <laughs> nose and my toes. Um, so, yes, if I take a shower in the morning, okay. for real. But you know I don't wash my hair every day. So I have yeah, to do, like, true. a whole shimmy yeah. shit in, in the bathroom so that I don't get my hair wet, right? Yeah, so I have to. So it's really easy for me to kind of gloss over that part. But I do wash it if I'm taking a shower in the morning. If okay. I'm taking it at night which I do a lot because in the winter I'm cold. Yeah. And so I take it up. before. So if I wake up in the morning and I've already taken my shower and I've already mm-hmm. done my, I just do. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> no mas. No bueno. So that's, you're probably cringing. No, but. no, no, no. Cause I, I mean, I understand it and I feel like it really, I really do think it is because I have like the esthetician, like background and like Mm -hmm. education it's just like something that's become like a second nature to me so washing my face is one and then obviously just like some sort of sunscreen some sort of sun protection and I put it all the way down into my shoulders because I already have a bunch of like age spots and freckles happening in my shoulders so I'm trying to prevent that and then again like (laughs) I am lucky if I get sunscreen on which is horrible I know because I really should um and we, you know, there are now a lot of amazing sunscreen brands that yes. are doing like that 360 protection. So yeah. the blue light's not going to kill you. And we can do, I think we should do a whole segment on yeah. on sunscreen because that is a whole nother world. Oh, there's so much that goes into it. <gasps> yeah. And then the fact that there's like, I mean, like sunscreen for your hair now and, mm-hmm. you know, like there's powder sunscreen, but then you can also do like a serum based sunscreen mm-hmm. or you can have like a sunscreen that's your foundation primer. Like there's so many options and so many ways that you can like work it into your routine too. So I think people get intimidated by sunscreen, which I feel like sounds kind of dumb. Oh, I'm totally that person. But like people are just like, oh, it seems like a lot. It's going to be greasy. It's going to be heavy. I already have like oily skin or I already have like clogged pores. I don't need it. Or I've also heard like women just say like, well, I already have the wrinkles. I already have the age spots. I don't care. And I'm just like, oh, okay. That is totally me. Because it's true. Like I've made it this far. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, whatever. I have like pudding spots in various places and I'm like, whatever. They're just, the pudding is there and I, you know, the die is cast, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Shame on me. It should go into my arsenal of effects. Um, so you do skincare. Yes. And is, do you feel like awesome after that? Pretty much. Usually I, I think Cause it's just like giving your skin like a little drink of water. You like instantly kind of brighten up a little bit. Again, this would be that age <laughs> thing where she's half my age. Um, so yeah. Okay. All right. I'm buying and it. And then brows. Oh, I'm the big brows. into brows. Mm-hmm. I can't like, I can walk out of the house without mascara on or even concealer. Like I, I feel fine. I don't, mm. it's not the, my, 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 my most confident, but like I can walk out of the house without concealer and mascara for sure. Mascara is like, I don't want to say it's my least favorite like beauty product, but it's not like a must have for me personally. You wear lashes a lot too, which is wild to me because you'll put on lashes. I will put on lashes. But you don't really love mascara. 
No, because, okay, so I love lashes when I'm doing, like, a look. You know, when I have, like, a reason, I guess, to, <laughs> to look or, like, do you know what I'm saying? But, like, if I'm just going throughout a normal day, I want to be able to rub my eyes. Oh, yeah. I love just mm. to be able to, like, get in there and itch. So, so if you have mascara on, you can't uh, do yeah, that. Yeah, everything get gets that. smudged and you have to do that weird thing where you just, like, pull the outer corner of your eye and, like, hope that's enough. But that's enough. feminine. In it. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> like... Oh, let me just do this. No ugly crying here, right? We just dab. No, I want to get in there. Okay, so all right. So I just uh, brows. And it, brows in any way, whether it's like a brow like mascara or I really like the um, Eco Brow Pomade mm, is one of my favorites right too. now. Just because it's so easy to blend. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like you can ever go like too heavy with it. Right. And I really haven't touched my brows since everything's like opened back up since the shutdown. Really? So I mean, like I pluck like the very <laughs> middle part, but I don't know. I just haven't. So That's like impressive. you can see the little like how lot difference like in my little. The start looking, of my brow. I, I'm just letting everybody know I'm looking and it's like whatever. <laughs> bite no, me. but you can't, you can't, you're yeah, telling so, me you so, don't see a difference right now. And like how long these hairs are and how short these hairs are. I don't know why these hairs don't grow, but these hairs go crazy. <laughs> well, I have the fading tail. You, so yeah. yeah, like, and I think that's something hilariously I did not know. So I guess older women, mm -hmm. you start to lose your tails, which is funny. I, <laughs> you lose your tail. Um, that's kind of funny. Uh, and that could be super inappropriate, but, um, you know, you start to get like a thinness and also yeah. women my age, like in the nineties, we were all over with, plucking, the, thin with the thinner brows, which yeah. I never really did either, but I definitely created that arch mm -hmm. and got rid of all the stuff underneath. So I have to deal with my arches a lot. And so I guess if I was going to add a third ride or die, it yeah. probably would be brows. Yeah. But I, my eyelashes are so short and I so need concealer. But again, this gets back to that criticism, right? Yeah. So I guess how do we... Well, and too, like when you look at your best friend, like obviously you know when your best friend's like, mm, okay, like you've had a rough night the yeah. night before. But like you don't ever look at your best friend and you're like, oh, she didn't put on concealer today. Like, ew. Like you never That's think true. that. Yeah, you don't. You, you never do. Or same, like, I mean, maybe it's different. I don't have sisters. I was going to say maybe <laughs> it's, like, the same thing, like, as your sister. I don't know. I can't speak to that. But Right. Well, I can because I know, like, you know, I didn't notice um, how she changed occasionally because I was the younger one. I could look at her and be like, okay, that's coming. Yeah. Which is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> Um, so there were times that I did that, which was super helpful because obviously we were in closer in age than you would be to your mother. Yeah. Right. Cause obviously everyone can look at their mother and, and mm -hmm. see some version of themselves. But, um, yes, with a sister, they're close enough in age. Yeah. You can kind of see the, the, the trend or track. And, you know, after she had kids, I was like, oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So there is that for sure. But it is funny that, um, we are so much more forgiving of the people around us mm -hmm. and, I really want to find new ways and um, maybe through what we're talking about today, we can help people be more comfortable, right? Like in who they are, what they are, where they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have some really great stuff coming up uh, that we can talk about, um, that we have some really great guests coming on. Yeah. Uh, we have some really great, and they'll be on Zoom and Instagram live with us. Mm -hmm. So That'll be good, and we'll be uploading um, everything kind of concurrently, which I think is great. Um, but we should probably mention our title sponsor. Yes. Yeah. So uh, our sponsor for our London is London Beauty. So we are the Beauty Underground, but our title sponsor is London Beauty. It is a beauty store located in uh, Brighton, Michigan, and it focuses on clean, non-toxic, and cruelty-free cosmetics, mm -hmm. which we both know. And uh, there is an e-commerce site. It's London Beauty Online. And we love them because, well, we're there all the time. <laughs> um, so we, we love it because it's our home. But um, it is a great place and a uh, great curation of products that are super hard to find in the Midwest uh, and hard to uh, touch because, yeah. as we know, some of the bigger boxes and bigger stores only have a segment of clean or it's an afterthought or mm -hmm. um, they're not digging to find new uh, and new to market 
new to the country, new to skincare, mm-hmm. makeup, whatever it is. They're not looking for those indie beauty brands that are really lighting the world on fire mm-hmm. and are giving women permission. I mean, I, one of my favorites is um, Indy Lee. Like, I feel like yeah. she gives permission to people all the time, just in her presence. Same with RMS. Ilya. Yeah. They give a ton of permission uh, in if you, you know, watch a lot of their Instagram. So... London Beauty and London Beauty Online uh, dot com are is our title sponsor, and uh, we are drinking coffee as we always do every morning, guys. And you can always join us for a cup of coffee any day of the week at the shop um, with one of us or one of the team there mm-hmm. or anybody who um, happens to be sitting in there with us. We like to have a good time and we drink a lot of coffee. Uh, Kind of Gilmore Girls style coffee. Yeah, right? most definitely. <laughs> Fuels with, our day. With all the chocolates we have sitting around. Oh, yeah, too. that's kind of a problem. Again, why I have to weigh myself in the morning. Thank you, Michelle. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's that whole situation going on. So let's talk product, right? Okay, so yeah. we talked about our right, we were talked about how we have ride or die, right? So yes. I'll let you go first. What are you okay. jamming on today? So I'm just checking our time. Hold on, I gotta find it. Okay, so like I mentioned this before, this Eco Brow Defining Wax, there's, I think, like six different shades, Mm -hmm. but they're also like blendable and nice. I haven't really found anyone that doesn't fit into one of those shades. They're all they're all really cute. Like so, this is the shade Marilyn, um, which is obviously named after Marilyn Monroe. So I think that's really cute that all of the shades are named after different like. Hollywood celebrities. I think that's so. Really it's cute. it's not just a wax though. There's oh, a yeah. whole bunch of oh yeah. There's the wax. There's the defining crayon. There's also like a really nice gel, like a clear brow gel. Um, right, so what's your yeah on the brush? And what's the tip or trick you would have with that? Like, what do you think so is the? I like to. So don't laugh at this brush. It's broken. Oh <laughs> I like Those to- of you who can't see it's super <laughs> janky. That's it's funny. Missing the spoolie at the end. <clears throat> I like to go through and actually set my brows up. I brush all my brows up with a um, gel beforehand. Mm-hmm. And then I go in with my um Wait, you said it with gel beforehand? Yeah, I said it with gel oh, beforehand. Okay. So I can kind of put everything into place and see where I want my brows to be. Um And then I go in and fill. So I'm not like doing too much or like overfilling and then giving myself like scary brows. Mm. And then I go through and spoolie again just to make sure it's all. But once you spoolie, doesn't it remove the gel? No. Really? You just do like a. Okay, so this is. Okay, so I guess I should. I'm an aggressive spoolie (laughs) user, clearly. Because I'm like, ah. So this is my routine. I set my brows Mm -hmm. and then I go through and I put on my eye cream. And then I go through and like while my eye cream's like setting, by that point, like my brow gel has kind of like set a little bit and it's like dried down. And then I use the pot or the wax. Okay. And then I spoolie. Do you and do the same if you're doing a pencil? Yeah, actually. Okay. Unless like I'm having like a really lazy day where I'm just like trying to go to the grocery store, then I just like do whatever because I don't want to take the time. Mm. But like for an actual day where I'm doing real things. <laughs> actual day <laughs> I like to brow gel let it set pomade brush through again and then sometimes gel again depends on like how unruly my brows are that day but I think like my, my biggest like what's the word I want to use advice when it comes yeah. to brows is just blend like spoolie keep spooling. yeah there is something with the spoolie because mm-hmm. you can because I find that you you need to Blend it out. The other thing I find, ladies, is you don't want to start at the front by no. your nose or you get groucho brows. Yeah, I always yeah. start just like, I don't know, maybe like mid um, to yeah. a third of the way in. And yeah. then I always like, and I always like to like line my brows at the top to kind of create the shape that I want to go. Mm-hmm. And then I start like just a midway back, like probably just before like my pupil. Okay. And yeah. I like That's where I start too. Line out that way. Because I learned the hard way because, you know, I do that. Um, I change hair colors all the time Mm -hmm. and I get, I have to change the color all the time. Yeah. So if I'm red, it needs to be more red. If I'm pink or purple, it needs to be a, you know, more ashy color. Anyhow, 
I forget what color I was doing. I was doing a much darker color and I started at the front and I saw a picture or I was and doing a like, Zoom what? call. And then I thought, oh my gosh, how long have I been doing that? Because, mm-hmm. you know, Zoom's kind of newish. Yeah. I mean, not new, but, you know, we're all doing it a lot more and yeah. so much more keenly aware of our video presence. Mm-hmm. And I noticed, and I kept thinking, why do my eyebrows look like that? That's super crazy. They don't look like that in real well, person. Then, and then it's like scary because you're <laughs> like, I thought that looked good. Yes. I trusted myself. <laughs> but then that goes back to us being self-critical. Yes. Like, uh, did anyone I else know. see my brows and think, oh my God? I mean, maybe they did. Maybe. <laughs> they maybe did think maybe that. Maybe they did. But, but probably not. Yeah. But yeah, it's the same thing. I thought, oh my gosh, well, how did I, wow, how did I not notice that I had groucho brows? <laughs> and I'm noticing it more and more, which leads back to that whole idea of like, how we see ourselves and this moment in time where we're all on camera, which isn't going to go away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I'm getting even more comfortable with yourself and realizing that, that, that criticism of self is and that comparison of self is even worse for us now than it has ever been. Mm -hmm. And um, how can we peel away from that criticism? Because it is, it's brutal. Yeah. I threw myself on a call the other day and I, like, I didn't have time. I came running home. I slammed up my computer. My hair was like in a pin. I mean, I had done my makeup. I wasn't unmade up for the right. day. And I sat down and I looked in the, I clicked in really fast and I was on and my pot little thing populated mm-hmm. on the Zoom. And I was like, <gasps> sometimes that little like preview of what you mm-hmm. look like is the worst. The worst. And I hit close camera for a second, left, my, <laughs> left myself in the meeting, hit close camera and very quickly... Grab my red right my one of my writer dies. This is one of my more current writer dies. Is um, so RMS makes these uh small ish. I guess I don't know. Not really small. Uh, powder uh, mm-hmm. blushes. And you have been obsessed with this lately. I have been totally obsessed with this lately, and it has become. A, a staple in my arsenal because I feel like it gives me a great cheek flush, although you can overdo it, no joke. No, like, you for sure can't. I've used this color before, and a lot of times, because I just like things quick with myself, I use the same brush for like my bronzer and my pow- or in my blush. Mm-hmm. I've done it where I've done my blush first and then tried to bronze mm-hmm. out, and I just had to restart my whole face because <laughs> I had so like pigmented. purple contour. Oh, yeah, no, it's crazy. So this one's <laughs> called Moon Cry, just in case I didn't say that. Uh, it's Moon Cry by RMS, and it's a powder, and they're known for their creams mm-hmm. um, and their creaminess. And they've been around a good 10, 12 years oh, yeah. in the clean beauty uh, arena. And I love that they are continuing to come up with newness um, to support that clean beauty uh, um, kind of more like authentic, easy to wear. You can build it. You can not build it. You can do something dramatic with it, but you can also throw it on after yoga or to the grocery store and not feel overdone. So we do love the line for that in so many ways. And this actually looks like it sparkles, but it doesn't. But what I like about it is that because it's a powder, you would think you have to do it with a brush. New fact, new fun fact. No, you don't. I've been doing it with my fingers. Well, and haven't you been wearing it as a lip color too? I have. Which I find crazy. I think it's crazy, but you, I just tap, like I'll put my lip balm on in the morning and then I just tap it in mm-hmm. and it gives me this like little hit of color that looks really natural and <clears throat> not like, blurred out. I don't know. Cause I think just cause it's a powder, I would think it would like make your lips look like cracked, but it doesn't like because you, like, it's not. But it doesn't, well, probably because I'm doing it over lip balm. That's true, yeah, yeah. And I'm not doing a lot, but it just is enough to stick and make it look stained. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm leftover coughing from yesterday, but I'm obsessed with it. It's mm-hmm. like my new obsession, and I think it's awesome, and um, I really love it. So that is my new ride or die, and it looks like my ride or die. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks it is, well loved. Really well Let's loved, but I've used it a ton and look, I've hardly gone down, yeah. which is amazing. So I think, um, eyebrows and cheeks for sure are yeah. two really great things to make you feel confident and comfortable, um, in this idea of, um, feeling authentic and true mm-hmm. in your own beauty, because sometimes that's all it really takes, right? So yeah. you're not trying to alter instead you're trying to, um, 
get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so again, like I don't even care if it is red lipstick and a glitter cut crease. I don't think it matters. I think you just have to be comfortable. Right. In every aspect yeah, of and your journey. I feel like, yeah, if a glitter cut crease and a full contoured face, like if that's what makes you feel at home, mm-hmm. do it. Like yeah. I don't think there's anything anything wrong with that. No, and I think there's always like a time and a place for each derivation. Mm-hmm. Like you're yeah. not going to go work out in that, right? No, like that seems don't. crazy. That's horrible for your pores. Yeah, the esthetician <laughs> comes out. Please don't do that, ladies, because your skin will hate you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, wipe it off, do whatever you have to do. Um, but yeah, I think it, it lives in all of us and I love all the differences, right? That you can wear red lipstick one day, you can wear mm-hmm. a full whole palette of lipstick and, and eyes the next day and then something in between the day after that and, yeah. and be a little bit of everything, which is, I think, so unique about being a woman. I don't think men have that opportunity as much. Where, where do they get to express, express their authenticity? A beard? Versus a mustache. Yeah. A new hat. A I tie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. In the corporate world, that was where everybody was like, ooh, ooh. hey, Joe, you look crazy <laughs> in that, I don't know, new stripey tie. <laughs> You're stepping out. So, like, I, I feel like as women, it's the best part of us that we get to play well, in this field. And I really like that about us, like, at the store, especially, like, when we're working. I like that clients can come in and see us in different states. Mm. Cause I, Legit. I know there's, We've been <laughs> <some different states. laughs> I know there's definitely days where I come in and I'm like done up. Like I feel like yeah, for sure you so do. pretty. And then there's other days where it's just like, I didn't even blow dry my hair after I got out of the shower this morning. My hair is just like air dried and I have nothing but like serums and oils on my face. So I probably look like a big grease ball, but it feels so good. And people see both. And I think sometimes, like, the first couple of times people come in, they see that and they're like, oh, Mm -hmm. like, you know about beauty? Like, they almost question it. But I think it's because, I don't want to say people are conditioned, but people are so used to, like, going into, like, big box stores and seeing their, you know, their makeup counter in in a full face. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's, like, hashtag, you know, storytelling out of school. But um, we all know that, if you go in those stores, they are pushing you towards products. Right. So their face is done to sell to you. sell you that product or to be a representative of that brand. And fair enough, right? You, right. You, you, you know, as the brand founder, you want people wearing your stuff. Right. A hundred percent. Like I understand that a hundred percent. But as a consumer, it's important to realize that those uh, sales associates are conditioned to uh, sell particular lines so that they get uh, either a commission mm-hmm. or An like I remember back sort. in the day when they blew up um, cross selling. Mm-hmm. I think it was at Barney's where they first really blew up the idea of um, of cross selling, so you could get commission from any line. So your commission wasn't based on your counter, and um, a lot of big department stores. Um, For years, you only could sell, like if you were at X counter, you could only sell X X brand. brand. And if I was at Y counter, I could only sell Y brand. So I had to pass my client off to you Mm -hmm. if I wanted them to purchase something from your counter. Right. So at some point, and I want to say it was Barney's. I could be wrong. It might just be because I'm partial to Barney's, um, (laughs) RIP Barney's, but um, that they wanted that cross selling to happen. Mm -hmm. And it it actually helped a lot um, because you could get what at the time was the best eye cream, the best skincare, the best eyeliner, the best, because you could go across all the counters and, and the staff was encouraged to do that. And I feel like, um, that's an important thing to know that you're getting authentic service. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you're out shopping, no matter where you are, you really should be thinking that way. Like, is this an authentic representation? Cause no one brand can possibly be right for for everything, everything from nose to toes. Like Mm -hmm. it just can't, it can't be your vitamin source. It can't be, and your makeup and your body care. I don't know. And your shampoo, like it can't possibly fill. Right all those categories well, Mm -hmm. right? We just can't. So um, I think that's that's a huge industry thing that people maybe know but don't really think about. And you should be 
alert to, right? Yeah. Because we all need to stop measuring ourselves by a certain standard. And if somebody is working with you, and I think we try and do this, and I want to continue to have this discussion um, almost every time as we talk to women, like, how do we stop measuring ourselves by looking at other women? You know, we need to, to let, you know, ourselves kind of shine individually and how do we get there? So I think that's going to be a, a revolving theme for us mm-hmm. on, on this podcast. And I think that's why we are the beauty underground, right? We're going to talk about all that stuff that nobody likes talking about because it's kind of uncomfortable, right? Yeah. It does make you feel awkward at times because you think, well, that I don't like you're like, I like to put you in a smoky eye. Because I think it pushes you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, right? (laughs) But, like, wouldn't it be interesting to know why? Yeah. Well, and I think it's, like, we also kind of mentioned this about yesterday. Like, the the times where you're like, oh, you have to go to the beach. But you don't want to wear your bathing suit because you feel weird in a bathing suit. Mm -hmm. That's the exact same reason I feel weird in a smoky eyes. Because I don't wear... A smoky eye. I don't like, you don't typically walk around the house in like a bikini, but you walk around the house in your sweatpants and you always feel good in those. Yes. So it's just like about like putting yourself, if you try something and if you hate it, you hate it. Don't like make yourself keep doing it. Right. Of course. But like, I always feel weird in a smoky eye because I never do a smoky eye. Right. You know? Right. Or if it gets too heavy and you think, oh my gosh, that doesn't feel like me. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to that too. We obviously know who we are, but there are times, like you said, you wear a bikini And so you wear bikinis. I do not. Um, I have never worn bikinis ever in my whole life. I have a stomach that would light up the moon because it's so white, right? Like it is so white. Same. So, you know, and no freckles because it (laughs) ain't never seen the sun. Um, So, you know, it's funny because you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, if you, I, you know, I took a workout class in New York city and that probably will be its own podcast. Um, it was such an enlightening experience, but in the process of taking this class, you have to come in touch with your own body and be okay with it. So they're like, all right, touch your, touch your tummies, touch your head, Mm -hmm. touch your, you know, like get in touch with yourself and move through that. And I think it's true for these makeup looks and the things we're doing. It's a great place to experiment with who you are. Right. Trying on different hats. It's like we play with hair color all the time, right? Mm -hmm. We're different colors all the time. They don't always work. I've been colors that I'm like, eh. Yeah. This, I, um, last weekend, my boyfriend called it amethyst. That's what he called the color. It was like this weird red, pinky, purple color. I hate it. (laughs) Now it's finally washing out and I actually kind of like this. I'm sad it's on its way out, but I'm very happy that that color did not last Right, Very that long, it faded. Right, I right? was not a fan. Right, and so and sometimes it's just a color that's not really great with your skin. Yeah, and it's okay to be honest about that. Yeah, for sure. I know I have to get more honest um, sometimes because I just my defense mechanism is like whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Everyone's just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> so, um, which is probably its own defense mechanism. Just like I don't want to wear a bikini, so yeah. whatever. I'm not because no, and so who knows? After I get through. Um, all this weighing in mm. and dieting mm-hmm. nonsense. Maybe I'll I'll feel ready for a bikini. Maybe. maybe that might be the day. It might be the boat this summer, Next right? Summer, Next, yeah. This coming summer, maybe it will be the um last summer was the initiation of the, you know, the yacht club. <laughs> this summer, maybe on our retreat, when mm-hmm. we do our boat retreat, we will do um It'll be bikini mandatory. Ooh. And then that makes me have to do it because <laughs> I'm making the rule, right? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So stay tuned on that. Um, so I guess that uh, is kind of it for today. I did want to just make that last point. Like, let's go out there and be phenomenal women. Let's yeah. be those women. Let's be effing fierce. Let's go do it. Um, so we are the Beauty Underground. I am Kathleen. And I'm Amelia. And we will see you soon on our feed. And you will find us out there on Spotify and Stitcher and Apple and all those places. And, oh, I forgot our Easter eggs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm, So Almost forgot. See? Mm. (laughs) It's always at the end. So so you guys better listen. And I decided that we're going to, like, throw in a few extra, like, codes and coupons for people. So because you guys made it to the end of the podcast... If you use the code podcast15, all lowercase, 
um, at our website, you'll get 15% off your next purchase. Yep. 15% off. And that would be in store too. You just have oh, yeah. to say, yeah, yeah. just say, Hey, I listened. I listened. And the, the code is you just have to tell us the code. Cause then we know that you listen to the end. Cause see, I almost <laughs> forgot the Easter eggs. So we're going to have little Easter eggs, um, little fun things that'll help you get discounts at London beauty and, uh, and London beauty online. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, it's LondonBeautyOnline.com, oh, and yeah. we are in Brighton, Michigan, and we are here, and we are going to blow up this beauty business and um, talk some real talk. So we will see you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.